We light the candles, we'll hold the one with the flame like this. So bring in yours like this. This is the flame, okay, people? And then you bring in yours and light it. And then they bring in the next one like this so that you see that little piece of wax that just fell out? That's what we don't want to happen so that we all light on fire or anything. <laughs> That's what we don't want to happen. Okay. Just to be clear. All right. Well, I am so glad that all of you are here today. And I wanted to talk with you a little bit about why do we do the same thing every single year? Now, I want you to imagine something. A husband and a wife arguing about whether they should attend the Christmas Eve service. Now, maybe for some of you, that's not that hard to imagine. But for others, maybe it's very hard to imagine. Every year they have the same argument. One wants to go, the other doesn't want to go. Well, let's just say for the sake of our story, it's the, the wife who wants to go and the husband doesn't. But it could be the other way around. You know, she wants to go with all the family and... Uh, to the Christmas Eve and sing carols and, and see the decor and celebrate Jesus' birth. And it's been like that for years. It doesn't matter if it's raining or foggy or, or windy or, or even snowy. They're going to make it out for the Christmas Eve service because that's been one of the things that are so important to the wife. But every year, the husband takes just the opposite perspective. Christmas Eve, man, that's, I finally get some time off. Why do I want to get dressed up, go out when it's already dark, and go hang out with a bunch of stuffy religious people. You know, the type who talk one way and then go out and just do whatever they want, just like I do. Oh, well, I guess the wife only asked for this little thing. And uh, besides, if I do it, she'll probably owe me. And uh, I don't know how I can cash that in later. Um, so he's like, all right, I'll go. But he starts thinking about some questions, you know, like, hey, how come they sing the same songs? I mean, even I know it's like Joy to the World, right? Silent Night, they're probably going to sing that one. Don't they pick anything new? And then, I mean, could they change up some of the things that they do? And plus, I mean, look at these candles. I mean, just look at them. Purple, white, pink. Uh, isn't Christmas supposed to be red and green? Even I know that, right? And then what's up with the reading? It's like the same one they keep doing from that uh, Charlie Brown Christmas, you know, and then a couple other ones. So there's like not any mentions about battles or something exciting. Oh, well, I guess I shouldn't complain. Maybe if I make big fuss, my wife will let me stay home. But then if I make too big a fuss, she's going to get mad at me. Yeah, I, I better not risk it. It's probably only an hour and I'll be home watching TV in no time. Well, if any of that went in your head, and I'm not saying it did, I'm so glad that you're here tonight. I don't want you anywhere else in the world than right here uh, with us. So thank you so much for coming. I wouldn't rather have you, and I wouldn't rather have anyone else here, except for the people that are right here with us today to worship God. Because even if you had doubts about coming, I don't think God makes mistakes. And I think that He wanted you here. And I'm glad that you're here with us. And I hope that by talking and listening, we're going to all share and understand that Christmas is something really, really important. That it connects us to something way, way bigger than ourselves. That there are right now, literally, and this is not an exaggeration, millions of people sitting in chairs and pews and benches and probably even on the floor who are right now celebrating the birth of Jesus, who are coming together to worship Him. And yeah, I know, Christmas Eve. If you only come at Christmas Eve, we're probably going to sing a lot of the same songs and probably have a lot of the same scripture. And yep, still got that same Christmas tree up. But that's intentional. Because all those songs and all those readings and all those decorations, they point us to celebrate Christmas, to celebrate Jesus and what he has done for us, which is of such importance. It's a mystery, isn't it? How amazing God is. It's so joyous to think about what he has done for us. 
It's something that goes back even before Jesus was born about our need for him. It goes back to the very first people that God decided that he would come in the incarnation, which is a fancy way of saying God became a human being. And in that moment of God becoming a human just like us, he showed us the very full extent of his love, that he had a mission from the very beginning told to us by the prophets centuries before he came, that this is God, Jesus is God in all his eternalness, in all his glory, in all his power. He is the great I am, El Shaddai, Elohim, Yahweh, God himself. Christmas is God stepping into time, into space, taking on flesh and bone. The greatest event that has happened in the history of the world, and it is mind-bending in its complexity. I would surmise that no human words can adequately explain it. Nor could any human words explain its wonderfulness of what he has actually done, how God had emptied himself and become one of us to offer us the ability to transform us, to be who he wants us to be. And so Christmas time, don't miss that wonder. Don't let another year go by without understanding who God really is, why he came, and what the, the importance of Christmas is as one of our readings was in John chapter 1, verse 14, and the Word became flesh, and it made its dwelling among us. This showed how much God loved us, that He would choose us, that He would love us, that He would offer to redeem us, that He left heaven because He loved you. Every single one of you in this room, God created and loved. And he left heaven so that you may know him. He experienced the things that are common to us, pain, suffering, hunger, loneliness, temptation, the same as we. But he loved us, that he took all that upon himself. In fact, he would ultimately go to a cross and take upon himself our sin. And sin is the things we do that are messed up. God tells us not to do things, and we do those things. He tells us to do other things, we don't do those things. Our thoughts, our motives, our actions are not always in line with His. And so that has caused separation between us and God. But Christmas shows us how far God will reach out towards us that God reached out to you, to me, to all the people in this world because he infinitely loves us. Even though the Bible says we were at that time God's enemy, we were alienated from God, yet he did not abandon us. Instead, through Jesus Christ, he offered to reconcile us through him, once, the best we could hope for as human beings was maybe to avoid as much pain as we could in this life, emotionally and physically and spiritually, and then live perhaps as long as we possibly could. But with Christmas came a new reality. A reality that this world is not all there is, but that God created you to be with Him forever, for all time, praising Him where there is no more suffering, and no more pain. Because of Christmas, we fully understand His mercy and His grace. We who were once separated from God by our actions, by our rebellion, have now been offered a chance to know God. And to know Him is to one day sing with the angels for all time His praises. For that is how good He is. We know, right? We live in a world that is full of anxiety and frustration and anger. 
And God offers to help remove those things in our lives. He offers us to be a part of His family, to be adopted as one of His own, not just tolerated to have around like some unwelcome guest that I guess we've got to put up with them for the day. What time are they leaving? Eight o'clock, good, okay. No, He wants you there. He likes you. He enjoys your company greatly. And he wants you to have relationship and fellowship with him all the time because he knows your heart and he created you to be who he made you to be. Or Christmas reminds us that we have all been accepted if we seek him for those of us who want to be accepted, that we were all prodigal children running from God, but that he called us back to himself to find redemption See, Christmas is a story of finding that forgiveness, finding your place in this world. We don't have to live in the world for very long, right, to understand that the world is dominated by separations. I mean, we separate people all the time, right? Gender, race, social class, economics, education, philosophies, politics, put people in little groups, ostracize people for having too much or too little education, power, or position, pigeonhole the people into lower class, upper class, rural or urban, blue collar, white collar. And probably most of us have experienced what that's like to be separated or looked down upon because we weren't part of the group. No one wants to feel isolated and separated and segregated. No one wants to feel like they're on the outside looking in. But isn't the message of Christmas is that you are not on the outside looking in, at least not to God, at least not in the way that matters most. See, he created you to be on the inside by having a relationship with him, that he would accept anyone, anyone who seeks him and calls on his name as to repent of their sin and to seek him. Because the truth is we have all sinned. We have all fallen short of the perfect standard of God, and yet God is willing to forgive us. That God so loved the world so much that at Christmas, He sent His one and only Son, Jesus. And before Him, we are all equal, equally in need of Him. It doesn't matter to God your income level, your formal education, your uh, degrees, your work experience. Those things don't matter to God, not even your race or ethnicity. What matters to God is that you have a heart that seeks Him and wants to know Him and loves Him and echoes back the love that He has for you because then God will adopt us into His family and bring us where we always wanted to be, home, where He always intended for you to be, and all we have to do is repent and ask him. Say, I'm sorry for what I've done that upsets you, God. I'm sorry for trying to make a mess of things. Help me. And he will. Because that's how good God is. He doesn't want us separated. He wants us with him. You see... God is asking to make saints of all of us. And saints are just a way of saying that he wants us all to serve him, to know him, and to love him. And we are all capable of that. We may all be heaven-bound citizens if we turn towards him, for he is good. Christmas is the ultimate gift because it reminds us of how good God is. It reminds us of what God has done for us. It reminds us that God is always at work. He is never asleep. He never is taking the day off. He is always at work in this world and he is always at work in the lives of those who seek him. Let us seek more of Jesus this Christmas. Let's pray. Father God, we celebrate and we thank you for Christmas. And if there are any here tonight that do not know you, God, I just ask that you keep tugging on their hearts until which time they feel like they cannot resist the call you have put on their lives. 
Father God, keep speaking and drawing them home because of your infinite love for them. Father God, there are myself and others who would speak to them and help them in whatever way we could, but we know that none of us need help from another human being. We just need to say to you, God, I need you. I can't do this on my own. Help change me. Help me trust you more than anything else in my life and help me to love you more than I love anything else. Help me to want to know you and serve you this Christmas and fill my heart with more wonder, mercy, and love. And may my words and my life proclaim the message of Christmas today and every day. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, I'm going to invite Dennis and Cindy up. They're going to